Welcome, everybody, to Theory Lesson 5. Thank you for joining me today. Before we start, I have a few housekeeping issues to take care of with you. The first is, um, if you have not been following the theory lessons and have not done the previous ones, you may find this lesson difficult unless, of course, you already have previous theory training. So be aware that my teaching method is line upon line, precept upon precept, and that I am building a foundation in music theory where each lesson builds on the one before it. So just be aware of that, and if you have problems with this lesson, you will need to go back and listen to several of the previous lessons. The second thing is we are still having difficulties with the recording equipment, and I think we have the mic problems sorted out. But now my computer, uh, last session yesterday when I recorded this lesson, my computer decided it didn't like part of it, so it totally screwed it up. Uh, so now what I'm doing at the moment is I am redoing just the first part of Lesson 5, which is on the minor scales, minor keys, and relative minors. So what you're hearing right now is a rerun or a redo of at least the first 10 minutes of the lesson for whatever reason my computer decided to go on the blitz. Uh, so you will have to listen to this letter lesson sorry, in two parts, Part 1 and part two, and this will be uh, part two. I'm sorry, part one. Part two is the rest of the lesson. So thank you for tolerating all those problems. They become a real pain after a while. Okay, we're going to take a walk on the dark side today. Um, the minor keys, which are sometimes referred to as dark or sad keys. They are very common in Jewish music, and you are no doubt familiar with many minor chords as many Christian songs contain them, or many Christian songs may be written in minor keys. We already know that uh, in any major scale, when you play a major scale, you have at least three minor chords in every major scale, which would be the two chord, the three chord, and the four chord. And just for refreshing your memory, we're working on the key of C, and we're working on the C scale. And we know that chords are built on the seven different tones of the scale. So the one chord, of course, is a major chord. The two chord, D, F, A, is a minor chord. The E chord, E, G, A, is a minor chord. The four chord is a major chord. The five chord is a major chord. And then the six chord is a minor chord seventh or seven chord is a diminished chord okay so you know you've already played several minor keys now we're going to look at uh, minor minor scales today in their relationship to a major key so every major key has a relative minor key so let's think of the term relative and let's think it as is someone that's related to you in other words, a brother, sister, cousin, aunt, uncle, father, mother. Uh, and you will share traits and sometimes bloodlines with these various relatives. Um, you might share eye color. You might share hair color. You might even share a name. So in a similar manner, a major key shares things with its relative minor key. The first thing it shares is its key signature, and the second thing it shares is its notes. This means that when you see a key signature, it could be one of two different keys. Since we are working in C, no sharps and no flats, the relative minor key will also have no sharps and no flats. You can find the relative minor key in one of two ways. You can count down half steps starting on C and counting every note, or you can look for the sixth step of the C scale, and both will land you on A. So let me show you that. Once again, it's my counting method where I use every note beginning and end. So we'll start on C. We're in the key of C. We're on the C scale, and we're going to count down four half steps. One, two, three, four. Puts us right on an A. Or we can count up to the sixth 
tone of the C scale, C, D, E, F, G, A. Either way, we ended on A. So A minor is the relative minor of the key of C and is played from A to A. Now, you may be saying, well, how do I know then when I look at the key signature what key I'm in if it could be two different keys? Well, first of all, as we talked before, most songs start on the one chord of the key that you're in. So if you're singing or playing something in the key of C, chances are the first chord is going to be a one chord. You have one, four, five, and one. You're used to that tonality. In the event that this song is not in the key of C, but is written in the key of A minor, your first chord will probably be an A minor chord. And you'll hear that. You'll hear the tonality. Okay, you'll hear it. So you'll know almost right away because it's either going to start or end on the main chord of the song that you're in. So it'll probably start or end on either a C chord or it'll probably start or end on an A minor chord. Okay, there are three different minor scales. There's only one major, but there are three different minor. So this might add a little bit of confusion because in these three minor scales, the notes are not the same. They change. The most common minor scale is the natural minor, and it's the basis for the relative minor key. So if you want to define the natural minor scale, starting on any note on the keyboard, we have a sequence for that. And the sequence is whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. And this sequence will work in any natural minor key. Okay, I want you to look at this, if you can see it. First, I've drawn the scale for the key of C major. Then I followed with the scale for the key of A minor. And I showed you the whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole steps between the steps of that scale. And I'm going to play that scale for you. That is the natural minor, and it works in any minor key that you're in. It is not, however, the key that will be used for some of the chords in that, and we will come to that later when we get into the harmonic minor scale. But just be aware that you can um, find any relative minor by the counting of the four go, going down or going up six, and you can get to what the relative minor is. Now, suppose you're in a minor key. You already know you're in a minor key. Say you're in the key of D minor, and you're playing D minor chord. And you have no idea, okay, I'm in the key of D minor. Now, if I'm going to write these notes down, what, what key signature do I use and what is the relative major? Well, you can use just the opposite of what we just did in counting down to get the relative minor. You want to find out what the relative major is, what the key signature is. Start on D and count up your four. One, two, three, four. It's the relative minor of the key of F. So it means there's one flat. Okay, so it works both ways, going back and forth between major and minor. Okay, and I'm going to stop there, and you're going to turn to part two, the next part of the tape. And hopefully uh, the rest of that is listenable. You can hear it. And uh, we'll pick up where we left off on this one. 
and continue on our study of the minor scales, keys, and relative minors. So please join me on the next segment. Have a great day.